Welcome back to the channel. I want to talk today about chat GPT and specifically what it might mean for medicine. This is the talk of the town. Everyone's been saying, have you used chat GPT? Get on there, give it a try. And I encourage you, the audience, if you haven't yet used the software, get on there and give it a try. If you interrogate it, if you try different prompts, if you ask it to imitate voices, if you give it medical cases, that will give you a better sense of what it's capable of. I've had a chance to do that. And actually, I wrote an article about it, and then I got a lot of emails from people who've done even more than I've done. So let's talk about it. What do I conclude about the product? Well, on Twitter, there are two extremes of opinions. One extreme is that it's incompetent. It'll get everything wrong, and people will tell you the anecdote of it, getting something wrong in medicine. On the other extreme are the people who think it's going to bring down all of human civilization. And I think something in between might be the right answer between the total end of human civilization and it's just incompetent. Of course, people who highlight that it has bias or that it summarizes somebody incorrectly or that it doesn't understand the correct COVID-19 policy have to acknowledge that that's also true of people. I mean, people have biases. People are not 100% on COVID-19 policy, at least according to me, because I have my own views on it. And so I think many people are getting it wrong. ChatGPT also gets some things wrong. That can't be the measure of it. You can't demand perfection from it. You have to just say, is it as good as what a person, a capable, competent person would do? And I think that's the right test. So let me walk through some of what I think it will do. Let me just give a nod to the fact that people have told me they've given it many, many medical prompts and that its accuracy is actually quite remarkable. I've actually tried many oncologic situations where I've asked it to come up with treatment strategies. It was actually, again, not perfect in my opinion, but pretty good. And then the question is, is it as good as somebody who's practicing? I think it's getting quite close and that is what's interesting to me. So let's talk about how it's gonna change medical practice. I divide my essay into two broad domains, the medical writing portion, how we're going to write and how we're going to sort of disseminate and, and, and imbibe information, writing and reading, and then the whole section about how we're going to practice and who's going to go into medicine, what's medicine going to be like. So let's talk about writing. I mean, I think the obvious thing to say and what most people would say is that ChatGPT, what it's going to do is when you see the patient and you open your patient note visit for that day, it's going to already be templated. ChatGPT will pull all the structured data into that template and it will already sort of sketch out most of the note. You're just going to have to go in and add a few things at the end. I don't know if it's going to be capable of um, even helping you formulate the plan based on the imaging and based on the laboratory results and based on what you input, but it's very likely to be that's what it's going to do. But if you think about that, okay, yes, it can help with notes, but that's not going to be where it stops. It can do things in the chart that nobody has a financial incentive to do currently. And one of those things is turn this huge chart of mostly garbage into a two-page thing you could read and actually get something out of. So I imagine that everyone's chart will have a two-page Wikipedia page in the very beginning. And it's going to be Wikipedia in the sense that anybody will be able to edit or modify. It'll track all the edits. And it's going to be driven by ChatGPT. ChatGPT is going to be the one doing the synthesis of this page. And what the page is going to be is basically a summary of all the key relevant studies, a summary of where the patient is in this exact moment. It will always be up to date. It will link to the imaging. It will link to the pathology. Um, but that's going to be what people read. They're going to open the chart. They're not going to read their last note. That's what people do now. They're going to read the Wikipedia page. And it's going to be the same if you're the rheumatologist or the oncologist or the ID doctor. We're all going to read the same thing. And we may each make a little bit of modifications. They may have A-B testing. So every time it shows it to one of us, it gives us one of two options uh, and sees whether or not we like it uh, or gives us two options and asks us to choose which is better. All these things will just strengthen it. Um, that's how you're going to consume the information from the chart. And I think we'll have to ask ourselves whether the current model where notes are synonymous with billing makes sense. But to me, it doesn't make sense at all. So whose job is over? Well, medical scribes, it's just going to be totally not necessary. Uh, and I mean, I think that's the biggest change there. Let's talk about research. Right now, when it comes to doing research, there are many, many research teams and many, many research groups. Uh, one problem that everyone has is that it takes so much time and effort to draft your ideas and get it into a publishable format. And that's why you have this huge dissemination of labor and each group can publish a few articles and some groups can publish even more if they work a little bit harder. 
But the biggest limiting reactant to writing in academic journals, in my opinion, is having good ideas, novel ideas, clever ideas, interesting ideas. That's where I think chat GPT, it's not going to get you there. I've never seen it demonstrate novelty, make a very crisp and new argument. What I see it do is it synthesizes available arguments of, on the internet and, and it uh, takes some sort of centrist position just because you're the center of what a lot of people think doesn't mean you're right, of course. But it's, it's difficult in really being rigorous uh, in, in pushing the boundary of an argument. Whereas in contrast, academic writing, new ideas, clever ideas, rigorous ideas, that's the coin of the realm. And so what ChatGPT will be incapable of doing, in my opinion, and I don't think this can ever be overcome with technology, is formulate those novel ideas. Or at least that'll be the final hurdle. I mean, the other things will come first. What it's very good at doing is drafting, um, uh, writing what you tell it to write, uh, writing it in a certain tone, a certain style, doing that labor of writing. So what do I think is going to happen to these groups? I think many of the groups that don't have new ideas that are really sort of doing replicative work that other groups have done, those groups are going to be driven into extinction. Uh, if, you, if you primarily are doing work that takes someone else's idea and, and fleshes it out to a few new logical conclusions, you're going to be driven to extinction. And the reason being is that that primary team with the ideas Right now, their limiting reactant is they just can't write out all the implications of their idea. Now you've removed that restriction. ChatGPT is a medical writer for everyone. It's the democratized medical writer. And so those primary teams are going to be generating, you know, 3x manuscripts per annum. It's going to be uh, unbelievable. I doubt that the reviewers will be human anymore. The reviewer itself will be a, a chat GPT instance. It will be some sort of software reviewing and helping collate what's in there so that the editor can make the call. And I think the editor probably will be the ones making the call going forward without having the onerous peer review system that nobody likes where nobody gets paid to do all this labor. So what do I think it means for research? I think I would be very, very scared if I was in the NNI bucket, the no new ideas bucket, because your research career is going to go hindered. It's going to be dampened. Whereas people who are not creative and novel and thinking of new things, their research career is going to boom. So if anything, it's actually going to widen disparities. Um, but perhaps in maybe not, maybe I shouldn't use the word meritoc meritocratic way, but it's going to widen disparities by a metric that we think has some correlation with with merit, which is the ability to have novel ideas. I, I don't want to say that that's the sole correlative of merit. And so that's why I think it's going to lead to some distortion in the market. Okay, uh, that's it for that. Let's talk about medical practice. Medical practice, we have a few cultural trends coming together. We've got ChatGPT, and it's getting pretty good at solving cases. We've got... Um, We've got a movement that says any effort to provide a numerical score to judge somebody's intellect is flawed. We can't have grades. We can't have step one scores. They're not saying it, you know, I was always opposed to step one grades, step one numerical score, not because I'm opposed to numerical scores, but because I think step one tests the wrong content knowledge. So that was a different objection, but I'm not opposed to numerical scores on tests, but I think there are a lot of people who are. Um, so you get these movements coming together. This software is capable of solving and making clinical recommendations. And it's not as good as the best doctors, but it's certainly better than the worst doctors, and it's getting quite good, and it might be as good as the average doctor. Soon it will be better than the average doctor. The rate of change is remarkable. So there are three big pillars, I think, to being a great physician. One, you've got to speak compassionately and empathetically. You've got to be empathetic. Two, you've got to be good at physical skills insofar as you have a job that has physical skills. ID, I think, next to no physical skills are required, but surgery, I think, a lot. And then the third pillar is you've got to make good medical decisions. I think ChatGPT is just going to blow the roof off the third category that you're not going to be required to make very good medical decisions anymore because ChatGPT is going to be a crutch. And I suspect they're even going to do a randomized control trial of doctor gets to make the decisions themselves or doctor has to, uh, or doctor plus ChatGPT or ChatGPT, you just follow blindly their decisions. And I suspect it's going to very soon show an overall survival benefit if you just blindly adhere to ChatGPT or ergo, you're going to be wrong to deviate. That's going to be the implication of that study. And it's going to cause a lot of consternation. So anyway, back to my point about medical training and selection. What you've done is you've removed a big bucket, which is analytical thinking. You've removed that as a prerequisite for medicine. You've coupled that with a cultural movement that says we don't want grades and we don't want test scores. And so you're going to flood, I think, medicine with hopefully people who have some empathy, although that's very hard to measure. Hopefully people who have physical skills, which is also hard to measure. Pretty much they have hands that can move. Um, and I think the net result is by most people would say we're going to get a lot of more mediocre physicians. 
I think that's true. I mean, I think that's true. Similarly, like when you automate making of an uh, automobile, you might not get the best craftsmen, but you're still going to get a good automobile. You're not going to get the smartest people going into medicine. I think it's going to severely erode uh, the analytical thinking in medicine, uh, which is not going to be a problem for most of practice, but will be a problem on that edge where you need people to sort of push on the system and, and find the limitations of it and, and push knowledge a little bit further. Um, only the most clever doctors, I think, will be able to consistently beat ChatGPT. Um, this, I think, you know, it's not up to me to give a normative conclusion as to what it will mean. It's up to you to think more about what it will be that uh, really you could pick medical students at random, more or less. You could have a modified lottery and really pick them at random, and you won't be requiring them to be the, the smartest people uh, in terms of analytical thinking. There are other types of smart, sure. Um, uh, that that's going to create a lot of implications for what does it mean to be a doctor going forward. All right, this is these are my two broad categories of thinking around ChatGPT. I think it is, and I've been a skeptic about this, but I do think it is quite transformative. I think it is going to fundamentally change many things in in life and society. And I'm a skeptic. Okay, I was a skeptic before I played around with it a little bit more. Uh, I don't think it's going to change the part of the world that I'm most interested in. That's the other thing. The part of the world I'm most interested in, in are people who can really have original thoughts, who can think about things in clever and new ways. And I have not seen any hint of it doing that. What I have seen is that it can do things that you typically tell someone else to do in a highly competent manner. It will be the new assistants. It will be the editors. It will be the peer reviewers. It will summarize the documents all the time. It has a tremendous labor for work that's just, you know, above average. It's not superb. Uh, that labor will be exploited for a whole bunch of purposes. I suspect you won't even read the way you did. Um, you know, somebody could say, oh, you'll have ChatGPT write a thousand papers, but I can't read a thousand papers, so I'll have ChatGPT read those papers and summarize it back to me. So it's gonna be used on both ends of the process, on the creating the knowledge process and on the consuming the knowledge process. Uh, and in this respect, it's going to be quite remarkable. When it comes to practice, I think it's gonna fundamentally change who goes into medicine um, and, and it's going to remove the key challenge in medicine, which is making sound decisions, meaning that maybe the empathy will be prioritized. <laughs> I doubt that, not in this system, this broken system. Uh, or uh, the physical labor will be prioritized, but I also doubt that because we've never actually evaluated the ability to do physical labor. The last point I want to make is that uh, people talking about banning this, it's absolutely pointless. You could try to ban it in one country, it's just going to move to the other countries, you're just going to give a competitive advantage to China. It's absolutely hopeless to try to ban or slow this. People who are talking about that this is incompetent, I think, have not played with it enough and seen the advances from 3.5 to 4. Um, it's really come a long way. And so I think the right answer is something in between. Uh, it will dramatically change lots of aspects of medicine. Uh, that's what I feel strongly about. Uh, but of course, everything I've said is speculation, and so time will tell. And if you're interested in this, you can read the post on Vinay Prasad's observations and thoughts. It's the post about what ChatGPT will do for medicine. And uh, on that positive note, if you like this video, you know what to do. Like, subscribe, comment, leave a message below. This is what you can get on this channel. I'll be back with some more things. I have a clever idea that I'm going to tell you about later.